welcome to the abyss here on Extension Trail near Nanaimo on the east coast of Vancouver Island. This large fissure or crack in the earth was likely caused by a collapsing coal mine far beneath us, maybe triggered during an earthquake sometime in the past. Places like this fascinate me because of the mystery of what's going on far beneath us under the earth. So the abyss, which is a pretty ominous name if you ask me, is approximately 50 centimeters wide, which is just shy of two feet. And nobody seems to know how deep it goes. Oh, and all around the abyss, you can find other smaller earth cracks as well. It's a unique geological formation. Well, Vancouver Island is home to over a thousand subterranean caves and tunnels. The longest one that I'm aware of is called Thanksgiving Cave, and it's quite a bit north of us and has been mapped out at a length of over seven and a half kilometers. So right here on the east coast of the island, we're right in the middle of so many amazing caves to explore. It's time to don a helmet, turn on the lamp, and descend into the murky darkness underneath the earth, right here on Vancouver Island. And wintertime is the perfect time to do it. My name is Dan King, and I live on an island in the Pacific Ocean off the west coast of Canada. Over the last few years, I've been showing off this incredible place that I call home to people from all over the world. The last season, it was all about my favorite summer destinations. But this time around, I'm inviting you to join me in exploring the beauty of the winter months here. And I want to introduce you to some of the interesting people that I've met along the way. Welcome to Vancouver Island Explored, Winter Wonderland. I think for me, one of the first experiences I ever had with caving or, or going with a group of people under the earth was back in college. And I remember heading out with a bunch of friends. We had heard about this place you could go to, to go caving, to, to go underground. And we took some flashlights along. We went there. We kind of crawled through uh, a thin opening once we had found it. And then we went uh, just a little ways, maybe 10 feet into this big cavern. And that was it. Didn't go any deeper than that, but it was definitely something that I remember really enjoying and having fun, but also being a little bit freaked out because I can confess, I've got a bit of claustrophobia going. And so for me going into tight spaces and dark spaces was a little bit freaky, but I still remember having fun. I think before we start exploring caves on Vancouver Island, maybe we should switch it up and do what a lot of other people happen to do here on Vancouver Island in the winter and climb above the earth. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Welcome to the Romper Room. This climbing center located in Nanaimo is the perfect place to get ready for the next part of our adventure. Now, I haven't been climbing for a lot of years, but I'm hoping it comes back to me just like riding a bike or something. So let's go and have some fun. I mean? 
<laughs> okay, so maybe climbing above ground was not my finest moment. Perhaps I'll fare better going under the surface. Uh, we've traveled 40 minutes north in Nanaimo where we just were. It's a little bit rainy now, but we're at Horn Lake Provincial Park. I brought my friend Benha with me, a young guy who's from Santiago, Chile, and he's never before been in a cave. We're gonna join Miles, one of the guides here at Horn Lake Provincial Park, to take us into couple of the five caves that are open to the public to access. We're gonna get geared up in helmets and, and overalls and boots. We're gonna head up about 20 minutes on a hike and Miles will let us know exactly where we're going. But I'm excited to explore underground with you guys in places where natural light has never ever touched before. Something that is unique to Vancouver Island here and it's the best time in the winter, so they say, to do it. So let's go, let's adventure and go underground. My name is Miles Fulmer. I'm the park director here at Horn Lake Caves Provincial Park, where we get swarms of people coming over to see what the world of caving is all about. It's hiding under our feet all the time, but there is a difference between being in a cave and caving. We're gonna do the real thing today, so we'll see how these guys do in this underground environment and put them to the test with some narrow spaces and some climbing underground. Okay, so lights are on. We'll find if anybody's home. twilight zone of the cave, so there's still some sunlight that reaches us here. But um, you can see we're heading through this conservation gate. Touch as little calcite as you can. So I'll be pointing it out everywhere and you'll know what to watch out for. All right. Did this gate used to be, has this all, gate always been here? Uh, this was installed back in 2011. Uh, they started off just gating it at night, trying to stop some of the partying from happening in here. We started a 100 year restoration plan. And we are 10 years in, 10% of the way. But it's kind of cool that we're thinking so many generations ahead. We're heading into Main Cave. This was the first cave explored here back in 1908, was the first documented person. So there's been over 100 years of people coming through Main Cave. But since we started protecting the cave with this gate, we're starting to see those calcite formations getting their sparkle back. It's starting to grow back into its beautiful state that it once was. First impressions, Benjamin. Oh, it's, it's amazing here. It's my mm -hmm. first time in a cave, so it's very impressive here. I love it. I love it. A whole new world in here. Yeah. You don't see sites like this every day. So this was bones and shells of ancient sea life coming to life again as crystal formations in the caves. All the rock around us is limestone. The rainwater is slightly acidic, so it dissolves away at the rock. All the calcium crystals dissolved within to that water are gonna recrystallize to the nearest surface as the water flows through. So over thousands of years, we get these bizarre shapes, calcite, formations there's over 300 known formations in caves around the world so we've got a handful of them here we're seeing flowstone and popcorn rock and cauliflower rock rimstone pools here almost looking like rice terraces you would find in china where the water cascades is where the crystals collect yeah so we're going to see a lot of different shapes as we we head through if you see any creamy coatings on the rock like this, this is what we're going to try not to touch today. Because you can see how white it can be. Mm -hmm. But if it gets too touched by dirty hands and muddy boots, then it will get stained muddy brown. But thankfully, time heals all wounds. And with enough time, this cave is going to recover back to the wonder cave that they used to call it. <laughs> the wonder cave of Horn Lake. You just kind of wonder what happened when there's people climbing everywhere with muddy boots and setting off fireworks in the cave, all kinds of craziness. So we're <laughs> making an effort now to protect it.
fun little bonus side quest Cavers love to look for, Musical Rocks. That's the original rock music right there. Almost sounds hollow, right? Yeah. It's not hollow. Water can sweat right through limestone, so sound can really ring through it. It's got that perfect density. And if you get a thin flake, you wrote it out like this, there's a good chance it'll resonate when you strike it. These are fossils? Is a fossil, yeah. These are a crinoid fossil. So these were around back in the Permian period, 300 million years ago. They've been through two mass extinction events. They're still around today, so they're considered a living fossil. You can see little cylindrical shapes in the rock here. Sometimes you get ancient, very stale Cheerio shapes. This one. So that was an adventure underground in the winter on Vancouver Island. What was the name of that experience? That was the 90 minute action pack. We did main cave, we did lower cave, jam packed full of obstacles. You leave pretty proud of yourself. You feel like a real caver. Right? Yeah, I do. It was yeah. so, so good. Right on. Well done. Nice work. Off to the next adventure. Well, now that we're back on the surface, helmets and overalls and, and boots are off. It's hard to believe just a few minutes ago, Miles, Benha and I were meters underground, surrounded by darkness. I mean, these are places that natural light has never even touched before. And we were going between, you know, tight cracks in the rocks and there was even an underground river at one point going down that slide. And, and my claustrophobia, it didn't even, I didn't even think about it. It didn't kick in at all, that fear of tight spaces and the darkness that I was so concerned about kind of bumming out my experience, it never even happened. Because I think it was so comfortable being with a competent guide and it was, it was just so fast moving that I didn't even have time to think about it. That's winter adventures here on Vancouver Island, places like Horn Lake Provincial Park here and all the caves that are here. We only went in two of the five caves and apparently the ones that we didn't see, some of those are even more spectacular than the ones we explored just today. So there's so much more adventure. In the next episode, we're actually gonna sit down for an extended conversation and hear stories from Miles, our guide today, about how he got involved in caving and some of the precarious situations he's been in during his caving exploits. And then we're heading out to even more adventures after that. There's so much more here to come on Vancouver Island Explored, Winter Wonderland. We'll see you next time.